You're telling me that Germany isn't where we think it is? Nothing's where you think it is. That's because maps are lying to you. Well, kind of. Are you saying the map is wrong? Oh dear, yes. It's just a common belief that maps are absolute, conclusive, and indisputable. People tend to believe maps because by and large they work for them. They are accepted as fact. We see over time, we get to, we start to accept as true, even though it might not really be true, or it's just a representation of the earth. There is of course the possibility that um, the information on a map, you know, might be fudged, uh, that has happened. Generation after generation of cartographers have designed maps presenting the world as something it's not. In fact, some cartographers have used maps as tools of propaganda. Diago Ribeiro designed his 1529 map amid a bitter feud between Spain and Portugal. Ribeiro ignored a signed treaty which was supposed to split the world's newly discovered lands in two. Everything west of the agreed upon demarcation line belonged to Spain. Everything east belonged to Portugal, including the Spice Islands. But Ribeiro moved the demarcation line in the Pacific, claiming the Moluccas for Spain. Ribeiro may not have known the Moluccas belonged to Portugal, but as a servant to the Spanish crown, he certainly knew where his loyalties lay. Ribeiro's map has been called the first great example of politics manipulating geography. Not all maps, however, were created to steal land or to control an industry. The German cartographer Mercator originally designed this map in 1569 as a navigational tool for European sailors. The map enlarges areas at the poles to create straight lines of constant bearing or geographic direction. But why would seemingly loyal and dutiful maps want to betray us? It all comes down to dimensions. A three-dimensional globe cannot accurately be portrayed by a rectangular two-dimensional map. In other words, you can't square a circle. Geographers have always struggled with the challenge of representing our spherical world on a flat paper. So you can't wrap a globe in paper because you get wrinkles and overlap and it just doesn't work right. So that's where map projections come in. You could wrap this globe in paper and put a light source in the middle of the globe and it would project a shadow of the outline of the continents onto the map paper. As you move away from the equator, the shadow would get stretched. The, the globe is the only thing that represents the true accuracy of the world. But every projection you make, um, I would suggest you replace the word projection with the, the word distortion, because that's what it is. You're distorting everything. Unlike a globe where latitude lines are equal distances apart and the longitudinal meridians taper as they reach the poles, Mercator's projection spreads them out to allow longitudes and latitudes to intersect at right angles, allowing seafarers to chart a course across the ocean using straight lines. This adaptation is important because it may be playing into our unconscious prejudice. Mercator projection has fostered European imperialist attitudes for centuries and created an ethnic bias against the third world. And so the whole world was Eurocentric, became Eurocentric focused in a way at that time. And so we've just continued with those representations. Simply shrinking the countries nearer to the poles to their relative sizes would create its own set of problems. The solution? The Gall Peters projection, combination of similar looking projections designed by James Gall and Arno Peters, which aim to show the correct sizes of the land masses relative to each other. What the hell is that? Recognized by UNESCO, the efficacy of this projection had its shortcomings too, arguably stretching and squishing land masses to the same extent as Mercator. And he challenged the whole field of cartography and said like, you know, this is a white man's narrative out there creating these maps and I was like yeah you know sometimes people say there's a so-called Peter's map that's fair to all people all peoples if you want a map that's fair to all peoples you want it something where every person or every same size group of people would have an equal representation the Peter's map it's not fair to all peoples it's fair to all acres map makers continue to take liberties today just ask New Zealand. The next great conspiracy. New Zealand is disappearing off world maps. It may be silly, but New Zealand spearheaded a tourism campaign to have the country return to world maps. Turns out cartographers and artists around the globe had made a practice of excluding it. New Zealand, where the bloody hell are you? 
Seemingly germane, the practice appears to have created a crisis within New Zealand's national psyche. There are entire groups dedicated to calling out these oversights, not to mention similar groups for Madagascar, Denmark, and the Caribbean. Use the map on your phone and you'll likely find any of these places. Many digital mapping applications use Web Mercator, a modified version of the controversial projection. It preserves angles at large scales when you're zoomed in. It preserves the angles so that streets that intersect at 90 degree show up as intersecting as 90 degrees. Google, which has taken up the mantle of building a geographic chart unlike anything the world has ever seen, only recently began moving away from using the Mercator. There's no noticeable difference if you're zoomed into like a local or a city scale. It looks still flat and everything like a Mercator. But if you zoom out to a whole province now and you pan the map side to side, you'll notice that you're kind of looking at a cone almost. So the bottom of the map will move more than the top of the map. It's as if you're looking down on the Earth from space. So it's clear, even with the advantage of centuries of scientific achievements, the world's most sophisticated infotech companies are willing to admit there's no replacement for a globe. Over here we have team cartography. You'll see they are zoomed into their maps and um, editing. Once the, the map is actually printed, this is what we have. And then by hand, we cut round each of the gores. And this is the um, process of taking a flat piece of paper or a slightly curly piece of paper after it's been painted and stretching it so it forms over a sphere. And that takes about a minimum of six months to learn how to do. This is the painting section where everyone is painting um, either the continent or painting the ocean. And that's the thing that really makes the, finishes off the globe. 